The book is titled Who's Left? And the author who is on the line joining us today for the second time on my show, ladies and gentlemen, Curtis Howard. How are you, man? Hey, man. What's good, man? I'm good, man. Good, Beautiful. good. Yeah, yeah. I see you out there um, staying busy and doing a lot of interviews, and I'm glad things are picking oh, up. Oh, yeah, man. You know, I'm in, I'm in business now, you know, uh, so I've been uh, staying busy. I'm working with the housing uh, providers now uh, to establish a housing for uh, formerly incarcerated people. Oh, wow. Tell me a little bit about that before we get started. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm uh, the director of All of Us Are None San Diego chapter, which is a, a nonprofit that advocates uh, for formerly incarcerated people and their families. Uh, you know, I'm a writer. Uh, one of the housing providers uh, read an article that I did about homelessness, uh, invited me to represent uh, formerly incarcerated people. Uh, when it comes to homelessness and uh and took me on i've actually just recently got a two-year contract with them and uh it's all good you know so i talked to different housing providers different agencies on some of the barriers and obstacles that formerly incarcerated people face uh when it comes to housing you know Mm. how hard is it for a former uh, inmate to oh man it was such a big problem with me you know it stood me up for a long time even when i transitioned my mindset uh to transition and 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 you know to try to and uh become productive and make something out of my life well i wanted to do it but i also didn't anticipate the barriers of being able to find housing and it took me uh it kept me in a vicious cycle of staying in the system man because you know i wasn't i didn't have stable housing so when when you don't have that it keeps you on the street it keeps you on survival mode you know you might have a place here and there you you might stay with someone but you're still considered homeless if it's not your place you know so i went through a lot of that uh still end up uh with doing a couple violations you know and everything i just couldn't get my shit together without stable housing. So uh, it, it, it had a huge impact, you know, on me uh, being able to succeed, you know, and stay afloat. So when I finally did get it, you know, I kind of dedicated a lot of time uh, toward making sure uh, nobody else has to go through that, uh, knowing what, what it's all about, you know. Mm. Yeah. Much respect and kudos for you doing that especially since you know how hard it is um that's really really awesome man absolutely man absolutely yeah man i've I've actually paroled to the streets homeless actually paroled uh pulled up at the greyhound bus station and hit the sidewalk from prison and not really having a plan or nowhere to go so uh, your boy been through some ups and downs you know and uh but it's all good man and that's why i give back now you know yeah well i mentioned your book at the beginning who's left and if anyone wants to check out my first interview with curtis howard just type in dusty vision san diego dusty vision rolling 40s dusty vision curtis howard something along those lines and you'll be able to find the first interview that we did Uh, a couple of things that um we kind of briefly touched on, but we didn't get to get, get too deep in the first interview that um, I would love to uh, discuss with you. And before we uh, we jump into that, um, tell everybody kind of what your book is about, if they do not know about it. Yeah, Who's Left is uh, the caption. Uh, it's, the book is Who's Left, the story of my life involving gangs, drugs, and prison life. So those are the three things that it discusses uh, when I discuss, when I say who's left in the book, it means that after going through all of these things that people go through, because I'm not the only one, is that it shows that it's very few people left in the end. So my book starts with a lot of characters. Everything's true in my book. The names are true in my book. It starts out with a lot of characters that's mentioned in the book. But when you get to the end of the book, you find out who's left. So it kind of basically gives you a reality check on the lifestyle and 
uh, you know, what becomes of it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great read. My dogs are howling in the background. Don't mind me. They sound like wolves out there. 200 pound, <laughs> big old monsters. Oh, <laughs> you got the big one there, boy. <laughs> um, now, last time we didn't get to uh, delve too much into your drug use. And unfortunately, that mm -hmm. is a big problem in our community to this day. And um, that was a big impact on your life. Um, can you can we talk about a little bit about, you know, what uh, your, your journey through drugs? Like, did you start smoking weed and then just like, like, talk to me about how you got to where you got when it comes to the drug use. Oh, absolutely, man. Uh, you know, uh, when I was young, you know, we smoked uh, weed, you know, but we wasn't like it is now. You know, weed is like chronic now. Yeah, yeah, the four you finger know? lids, so, huh? Yeah, we, <laughs> we smoked Acapulco, Gold. You know, uh, commercial was, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, the, the, the commercial was the Reggie, uh, you know, and, uh, and the Colombian gold was the good shit. And, uh, the purple hair cess was like top, top shelf, uh, you know, so it kind of just started out with that. I smoked a little weed, you know, I wasn't never really, a, a really big weed head then, uh, but I smoked it, you know, and, uh, that was about it. They had PCP came out uh, a little later at that time, but I was afraid of it. I saw a couple of people smoke it and I saw what they did after they smoked it. And I was like, man, I don't even want to try that shit, you know, because everybody that I see smoking it, you know, was like flipping out, taking their clothes off, running down the street, you know, and, and all that stuff. So I didn't really have a problem with that. Uh, but, uh, Later on, in the, in the so so in so from that time, uh, in about like seventy seven when I first uh, uh, came involved with the Crips, uh, you know it was just a little beer here and there and a little weed, and, and then in eighty five, this was years later, I was incarcerated and someone was came in talking about crack. They were talking about, oh, man, there's some new shit out here. It's crazy, man. It got people doing all kind of stuff. You know, it's like he was like laying it out to us. And we was like, man, that sounds like some crazy shit there. You know, he's like, yeah, everybody's, you know, with this, man, you know. And, uh, and I came home and I seen the streets kind of lit, you know, and I seen what was going on. But I didn't mess with it. You know, and uh, but as you see in my book, I, I went to I attended business college. I actually got out and said, you know, I'm gonna go to business college. These people said they're going to give me a grant. You know, they're going to give me some money. I'll be able to get my own place because I was staying with someone then. And uh, I said, I'm gonna go get this grant, you know, and get some money, get my own place, you know, and then market myself in this electronics uh, that I was going to school for, you know. And so I went to school uh, for about five months or so. I seen a lot of this activity after school, the street, you know, people running around doing this. And I was like, wow, that must be what it, what is, what it is, you know. I ran into a partner of mine who told me, yeah, he was selling it. And as I was talking to him, people was coming up. He probably clocked a couple hundred dollars just in the 15 minutes that I was sitting there talking to him. People was coming up and I was like, damn, this really is something, you know. But I still stayed away from it until uh, what happened was uh, I went to school and when it came time to get the grants, you know, I was like, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to need this money, you know, and they didn't give it to us. You know, they said the grant, you do get the grant, but the money is actually going to be for the books and everything we've been supplying you guys. And that just flipped me out. You know, I was like, man, you know, I was really counting on this money. I was really looking forward to it. It was my whole plan, and I didn't have a backup plan. So when they hit me with that, it was kind of like I lost all hope of everything. Damn. So when I ran into my homie that night, you know, I was like, man, give me some of that shit, uh -huh. uh, you know. And I tried it, and it uh, turned me into a monster overnight. You know, I was like, fuck, you know, the next thing you know, you know, I was out there writing a mix, man, with, with everybody else. You know, it took me by storm. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. 
Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job.